So this is chapter six, where we're gonna talk about expressions in DynamoDB. We've seen a few examples of these already. Now we're gonna do a deep dive on all the different types of expressions. There are five different types of expressions that we're gonna talk about. The first three are all read-based expressions. So they're gonna happen on read operations. First is that key condition expression that we've already seen with that query operation. And then we also have filter expressions and projection expressions. Finally, we have two write-based expressions that'll be used on write-based operations. There you have condition expressions and update expressions. Let's start with that first type of expression, which is that key condition expression that we've seen before. Remember, this works with a query operation and it's how you specify which items you wanna read in a query. Now, the key thing about that key condition expression is that it's only gonna operate on those primary key elements. So this is why primary key design is so important because that query operation, you're gonna use it quite a lot to select different elements, different grouping of elements. And you, if you wanna do these targeted queries, you have to build that into your primary key. Let's take a look at an example. This goes back to that movie roles table that we've used a few different times. Again, with that query, we can only operate on that primary key. So you can operate on that partition key of actor, you can operate on that sort key of movie, but you can't act on those other attributes, role, year, genre, anything like that. Now I have to specify the partition key. So if I wanted to get all the movies for Tom Hanks, I can do that by saying actor equals Tom Hanks. Now I can also include a condition on that sort key if I want to. So I could say, hey, give me all of Tom Hanks's movies between A and M in the alphabet, that's gonna give me Tom Hanks in Castaway, but it's not gonna give me Toy Story. Let's take a look at our code just to remember what that looks like. We're gonna be using that query operation and we'll have that key condition expression. Remember, we need to specify that partition key, so we're gonna do that here. We're using expression attribute values just like we talked about in the last chapter to substitute an actor and we wanna match on Tom Hanks and that has to be an exact match. Now, if we're including conditions on the sort key, we can do that as well. Remember, we wanted to have conditions on our sort key where the movie title is between A and M, again, for Tom Hanks's movie. Here's our updated key condition expression here. We have this actor matching that Tom Hanks actor value, and we're also including an additional condition here where we want the movie to be between A and M. And if you go look down here, that's gonna be between the letters A and M in the alphabet, and it's gonna get us all those movies there. Now remember that sort key is gonna be organized like a phone book or a dictionary to where it's very easy to get a particular range of values or to say, give me everything greater than this or everything less than this, but you can't do anything that says like, hey, give me all the values that end with this. Just like you couldn't go to a dictionary and say, uh, give me all the words that end with ing. You're gonna to have to look at every single item to look at that. So remember, let's go back to how DynamoDB enforces efficient data access. This is very important for that query. When you send in that partition key, number one, first thing it's gonna do is find the particular node that holds that partition key. And the data structure that's being used there is that hash table, which has that constant time complexity of 01. So no matter how big your data set gets, it's gonna be 01, it's gonna be constant time. If you do wanna have conditions on your sort key, that's where the next two steps get involved. First of all, Dynamo is gonna find that starting value for your sort key, and it's using a B tree to store that all those sort key values under the hood. And the great thing about that B tree is it has that time complexity of O log N, logarithmic time, which doesn't get significantly slower as that data set grows. So just like a phone book, uh, it's pretty easy to find a particular entry if you know it and if you're searching by how it's organized. The other great thing to remember there is, is that O log N, N is the size of the item collection itself, not the entire table. So even if your table gets up to two terabytes, 10 terabytes, whatever, uh, you're only gonna be searching within a particular partition, which is maybe gonna be two gig or three gig or maybe 10 gig, but not huge. And then even if you are finding that sort key, you know, it's possible that you'll be reading a ton of values, maybe three gigs of values, which would which would take a lot of data, but, but DynamoDB is gonna cut that off at that one meg limit. So what you're doing is you're finding that starting value, you're doing a sequential read on disk, which is pretty quick, and it's gonna cut you off at, after one, one meg and paginate, make you make another request. So again, this is all gonna be highly efficient using that query operation. Last thing to know about that key condition expression is you can use a query on a secondary index and that's gonna allow you to have different access patterns here. So we've seen in earlier examples how we want to flip and create a secondary index with our movie roles where the movie is the partition key and the actor is the sort key. That allows us to use that query to say, hey, give us all the actors that were in Toy Story. We can quickly and efficiently do that there. Let's move on to the second type of expression which is filter expressions. Filter expressions can be used with that query and scan operation. So again, a read type operation, a fetch many type workflow. The interesting th thing here is that you can filter on non-key attributes. So you're not limited to your primary key like you are with that key condition expression. 
So again, let's go back to that movie roles table that we've had before. If we want to query on actor or movie, we can do that with our key condition expression. But what if we want to filter on something like the genre and get all the items that have genre of drama? You know, we'd want to get uh, Castaway. We want to get Tom Hanks in Castaway. We also want to get Natalie Portman in Black Swan. We can do that with a filter expression because it's even though it's not in our key. Now, I want to give you a word of warning about filter expressions, and that's that a filter expression will not save your inefficient queries. So if you've designed your table wrong and you think you can dig your way out of it with a filter expression, you are misinformed. To understand why, let's walk through the process that's happening when you do a query or a scan against your table. First, DynamoDB is going to read items from your table that either match your key condition expression or you know all the items since if you're doing a scan. Second, after it has read those items, then it's going to look to see if you have a filter expression and remove any items that don't match. Finally, it's going to return those items to the client. Now, the problem is there's that one meg limit on query and scan operations, and that's applied in step one when you're reading items from the table. So at that point, it doesn't know about your filter expression. So imagine you're looking for an individual item in a table that's only one gig. One gig is not that big. If you did a scan with a filter expression to filter just down to that item, you'd get it in one meg at a time, which would mean you'd need to make a thousand separate requests, 999 of which would be empty, and one of them would have a single item in there. So that filter expression is not going to save you. You're still going to be paying for all those reads. You're still going to hit that one meg limit. Let's take a look at our filter expression in code. We can use it with either the query or the scan. This example uses the scan. All we're going to do here is we're going to have this parameter called filter expression and we're going to have a string there. It's going to look very similar to that key condition expression that you used before. And here we're naming the genre. We want it to match drama. So this means that as that scan is executed, the only items that will be returned to us are the ones that have a genre value of drama. So if filter expressions aren't that helpful, why do they exist? Well, there are a few reasons you might want to use a filter expression. Number one is just to reduce network bandwidth from that DynamoDB server to your client. If you're going to be throwing a bunch of items away as soon as you get them, this could, can speed up that response time. A second one might be personal preference if you want to just save filtering in your application. Again, if you're just going to run a filter operation as soon as it gets back to your client, you can do it in DynamoDB if you prefer. Finally, the last one and really the only reason I use it is better validation around TTL. So when we talked about TTL, we note, noted that DynamoDB generally deletes those items within 48 hours of that TTL expiry, but there's not a strong guarantee around that. So if your application logic sort of depends on that item being deleted, I just include that filter expression when I'm trying to retrieve that item just to make sure that, you know, even if it should have been deleted by now, but hasn't been, I'm filtering it out and not getting it. And then my application won't have a bad result on accident. Let's move on to the next type of expression, which is very similar, and this is called a projection expression. A projection expression works on any read operation, and with a projection expression, you state which attributes you want. So if a filter expression pulls out entire items that don't match a particular expression, uh, the projection expression pulls out attributes that don't match our expression. Let's see where you might want to use that with an example. Again, going back to that movie roles example we've done before, imagine we had like the cover image of that movie stored on our DynamoDB item. And this is just this giant blob that is the, the image JPEG or whatever it is. Maybe we have a bunch of access patterns where we don't want to have that. And, and so like we had before, where if you want to reduce the network bandwidth, or you're just going to filter that out. Maybe you just tell DynamoDB, you know, don't return that at all. And you can do that and specify, hey, just return, you know, the role, the year, the genre, that stuff. But don't give me the cover image back. Let's take a look at the code to do that. This is going back to our query that we've done before. We have our key condition expression still that's matching on actor, but then we have a projection expression, which is saying which attributes we want to return. And we only run, want to return actor, movie, role, year, genre. We don't want that cover image because it's just going to bloat up our response. Now, all the caveats that apply to filter expressions also apply to projection expressions. That projection expression is not going to be applied until after you've already read your items from the table. You've already hit that one meg limit. You've already been charged for all those reads. So if you're worried about these big items screwing up your access patterns, you're going to need to design your table around that. That covers all the read-based expressions. Now we're going to get into our write expressions. The first one I want to talk about is the condition expression. So the condition expression applies on any write operation you do, which can be put item, update item, delete item, any of those that are going to be changing an item in your database. 
The condition expression is evaluated before that right is applied. And the key here is that if that condition evalu evaluates to false, that right operation is not going to be applied. This is really useful for a number of different scenarios, such as making sure you don't overwrite an existing item or making sure you don't set a, a bank balance or something like that below zero. So there are a few different functions you can use in that condition expression. You can use attribute not exist to make sure that item with that primary key doesn't exist this will prevent overwrites you can also do something like attribute exists to make sure uh, you know if you're incrementing a count or something like that 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 item actually exists first uh, additionally you can do contains to check for membership in a set or you can do size to ensure limits so if you only want to have a certain number of operations in progress you could store those in a set and check for size to make sure it's not too big Let's look at two examples of what that looks like. So here we have a put item. We're inserting an item into that movie roles table that we've used before. We're gonna include this condition expression that says attribute not exists actor. And what this is doing when it's operating on that primary key like that, it's making sure that there's not already an item that has that exact same primary key. Likewise, we can do it on an update item. So here's an update item request. And here we have this condition expression that says, hey, make sure that our balance is greater than this payment. Because what we're going to be doing is making this payment out of this bank balance. And we want to make sure that the existing balance is greater than that so that their account balance won't go below zero. Let's finish up with the last type of expression here, and that's update expressions. These are going to be used on update operations only, as you might guess from the name there. And what you're doing here is you're stating which attributes you want to update because when you run this update operation, it's not going to overwrite the existing item entirely. It's just going to change those attributes that you specify in this update expression. Now, update expressions have four different verbs that you can use, and those are set, remove, add, and delete. And the way they work depends on the attribute type that you're operating on. So let's walk through those different verbs and how they work. First of all, that set verb on any of the attribute types you want, you can use it to add a new attribute to that item, or you can use it to overwrite whatever is there for the, an existing attribute. But if you're using it with a number type, you can also use that to increment or de decrement an existing value. Let's take a look at both of those in code. So here's an update item. We're gonna be doing an update expression here. And what we're doing, this is that first example where we're just setting a particular attribute equal to a particular value. So we wanna set the box office receipts to this new number that we have in here. Now you can also use that set on a number if you want to increment or decrement by a particular amount. So we'll do that here. Imagine we have this bank account system. Here's our update expression. And what we're doing is saying, set this balance value equal to the current balance value minus this payment amount. So what it's gonna do is go read that current value and then subtract this payment amount of 3197. This is really great because I don't need to go out, reach out, find that bank account, see what its current balance is, and then make a, a second request to change that balance uh, without wondering if someone else has changed it in the meantime as well. So those are the two operations for the set verb. There's also a remove verb, which is basically the opposite of that, especially that first way where you can just delete an attribute from an item if you want to. The third verb we have there is an add verb. So you can use this on a number type to increment or decrement an existing value. This is gonna work the same way as that set. And the DynamoDB docs actually recommend using set instead of add here, so I, I do that as well. Uh, the second reason you might wanna use that verb, that add verb is, is on an attribute type of set where you can insert a new element into a set. Finally, the last type of verb there is that delete, which only operates on that set type. And what it does is remove an element from a set. All right, that wraps up chapter six where we talked about the different types of expressions. Let's just run through those again. Number one, that key condition expression that's used on that query operation to identify the item collection and also the items within that collection that you wanna fetch. Second, you can use that filter expression to filter out items that you read in that query or that scan operation. Again, not gonna save your bad design patterns, but it can help you in a few different situations. The next one is that projection, which is similar, but instead of operating on entire items, it's going to operate on specific attributes within an item. So you can filter out particular attributes that you don't want returned. Finally, we have those two write-based expressions. Number one, that condition expression that is evaluated before that write happens. And if that evaluates to false, it's going to cancel that write operation from happening. So you can use that to assert certain existence about your item. Finally, the last one we have there is that update expression. It's used with that update item operation and it specifies which uh, attributes you wanna change as part of the update. In the next chapter, we're gonna talk about the approach to data modeling with DynamoDB, how it's different than a relational database and the different steps you should go through. So check that out.